Okay. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this evening, and I thank you for um, all who could come tonight, and we just pray that you would bless uh, this evening. Lord, give us a profitable time, Lord, as we uh, just attempt to learn more Greek so we can understand your word better in the original language. And so we just ask these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So um, you guys will have to bear with me. Uh, hey, James, can you, can you click the thing that popped up on my screen there? You'll have to bear with me because um, I just got back from Santa Maria. <laughs> I was, we had a, we had a um, conference up there, and so I came back uh, today. And um, so that was about, what was it, like 5 o'clock, something like that. So, so, but we power through, right? In Greek, all right. So, um, and also we have a special guest with us tonight. So. Oh. Jim Lossing is here. Why don't you come on up here, Jim, so they can see you better. Who's Jim? Okay, so Jim Lossing is one of our missionaries, uh, has been a missionary in Peru for a lot of years. Oh. And, and one of the things that he did there was teaching Greek. Uh, in Spanish. In Spanish, yeah. <laughs> so, so he is just passing through today to... Well, they're, they're actually retired now and they're moving stuff from Peru to the US and in the process their daughter had a baby. So yes, long story. But um, yeah, so he found himself in LA here for tonight. So, <laughs> so I said, hey, Jim. Have a class. Jim, where are you coming from again? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've been in um, Phoenix the last few weeks. Waiting okay, for, cool. Waiting for our sixth grandchild who was born wow. on the seventh. Aww. So just a little tiny baby. Oh, how cool. We're still, we're still helping take care of the other kids too. <laughs> and, tomorrow. Okay. And pastors mentioned that you translated Greek. Wait, in Spanish? Is that I, I, am I, 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 I for quite a few years I've taught. Uh, in Spanish, I've taught Greek to Peruvians. That is so cool. So I, so that is I, amazing. I explain the Greek in, in uh, Spanish. Wow. My mom would love you. I don't speak <laughs> fluent Spanish, but my mom speaks fluent Spanish and uh -huh. she loves talking to people in her language. So I, yeah. Anyway, I think that's awesome. That's much needed. So, so he's, he's been basically training pastors in in peru and so jim did you did you use a greek grammar in a spanish greek grammar or how did that work uh there are, i used there, there are a couple but i put i i put a whole bunch of things together and made my own yeah yeah okay that's wow. what I yeah yeah all right impressive. wow good so if you got any questions about greek he's the one to talk to because he's been teaching it when I, when I was learning English grammar, he was teaching Greek grammar. So. <laughs> That's so cool. All right. So, um, yeah, so what we're going to do tonight, uh, we're going to start with some review, and, um, and we'll get into some of Lesson 6, uh, but we're not going to do all of Lesson 6. I'm going to break it up because um, some, of the, some of dealing with adjectives is going to get into a lot. So, um, so what I want to do first is we're going to go back and look at some vocabulary and do some review of vocabulary. Okay, so, um, so we've got, if you can go back to page 20, lesson three, this was our first vocabulary that we had. And um, let's see, hey, Andrew, on my file cabinet, there should be an extra book. Yeah. Um, so this is the first vocabulary that we had. And so, so without looking at your book, okay, let's see how much you know that you can remember first. So how about blepo? I see, yes, blepo, I see. Blepo, I see. Um, Gnosko. I know. I know you know, but what is it? No. <laughs> yeah. 
Right. I know. Well, I know. Yes, you're right. I know. Um, grapho. Right to right. 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 Correct. You're right. <laughs> um, Didasco. I teach. I teach. Very good. Didasco. Lambano. Uh -huh. I take. Or it could also be received. How'd you pronounce that, please? Lambano. Lambano? Lam Lambano. Lambano. Yeah. Okay, thank Lambano. you. Like a lamb. Okay. Yeah. Imagine somebody, some shepherd taking somebody's lamb. Okay. <laughs> I take. Yes. Uh, Lego. I say. That? I say. Lego is I say. Well, I have a question. Yes. Is, is that the same? Would that be the same word you use for like I tell or speak or would it be different? Um, usually, I, I think they'll usually translate speak and say would, Lego would be. Um, there is, there are other words like for to declare something. So sometimes they might translate that tell. But um, yeah, I mean, so there are other words for speaking or saying, but this is the most common, and and usually it'll be say or speak. I'm pretty sure. Like, could you use this word on an object? Like, I say, do something. So, if you if you were speaking to an object, I mean, definitely to another person. Um, I don't know if it makes a distinction. I don't know if they ever. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. <laughs> to an object. Where are you going with that? Uh, right, right, okay. yeah, 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 right, 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 right. Um, but so, so like, okay, so say the say it again then. So like, um, could I? Do you have to say something like that? Oh yeah. So so you could say Andrew's asking, do you have to say a particular thing like that's that's spoken in the sentence to somebody, or can you just can it, you just use it as I say I'm speaking to this person, right? Yeah, you could use it as I'm speaking to this person. It doesn't. There's a. It does. The sentence doesn't have to say what you're you're saying. There doesn't have to be an uh, yeah a direct object of what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, like you could say, um, uh, verily, verily, I say unto you, it's gonna, it's gonna be a form of Lego. Yeah, yeah. Um, luo. 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 I lose. Yes, luo. I lose. Or destroy. Yeah, it could be either one. And. Um, Context is going to have to determine that. Uh, then echo. Echo. No. I have. Echo is I have. And I don't have a good way to help you remember that one. You're just going to have to. I don't have any tricks for that one. Echo. All right, good. Okay. Um, so let's go to page 23, and we have our second vocabulary list that we did, and now we're getting into nouns there, and let's see how many of those you can remember. Um, so Adelphos, or Adelphos. 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 Actually, it should be Adelphos, because the, the os is accented there. Brother. Brother. Brother, yes, brother, yep. And Philadelphia. Is a oh, city brotherly love. Brotherly love, yep. The the Adelphia. Remember that. That'll help you. Yep. Um, Anthropos. Man. Man. <laughs> and yes. Anthropology. The other word, anthropology. Yes, exactly. Um, apostolos. Apostle. 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 Yes, good. 
uh, doulos, servants, employee, yep. slave servant. Yep. Okay. Um, Doron, gift. Yes. Um, let's see. Thanatos. Death. Death. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, Kieran. Kieran. Temple. Kieran, the temple. Can you uh, pronounce it again? Yes. Kieran. With an H yeah. sound? Yes. Yes, because the dip it's got a rough breathing mark on it. So. Oh, okay. Kieran. Yep. So you have here on, and it has the rough breathing mark like that. Okay. So that's here on. Okay. Um, Kai? That's and conjunction. And. Yep. Logos. Yeah, that's the word. Word? Namas. Law. Good. Oikos. Oikos. The house. House. Yes. Good. And Quios. Sun. Sun. Yes. Good. Okay. Good. And then let's go over to page 29. And this is the vocab we had last week. Uh, So let's see what we can remember with this. So the first one is Aletheia. 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 Truth. Truth. Remember how I told you how to remember that one? No. Aletheia Lossing. Yes, Jim's wife. Yes. Yes. We have Jim with us tonight. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's how I always remember. So <laughs> That's the truth. Thanks. Yep. All right. Um, Basileia. <clears throat> Basileia. Basileia, a kingdom. 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 Very good. Uh, Graphe. Oh, I'm looking at the page. Scripture, writing, to write something down. Yes, writing, scripture. Doxa. Doxology, glory. Yes, glory. Oh. Yeah. Doxology. A rain a. I remember that one, peace, because of peaceful rain. Yes, good, peace. Ecclesia. Ecclesia. Church. Church. Yes. Church. Entole. Command. Entole. What did you say? Command. Commandment. Yes, commandment. Good. Uh, Zoe. Zoe's life. Life. <laughs> hey, Mara. Day. Hey, Mara. Hey, Mara. Day. Cardio. Hey, Mara. Cardia. Cardiac. Heart. Heart. That's good. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Parabole. Parable. Parable. Uh, phone. Oh, sound, voice, sound. voice. Yep, voice. Yep. Or if it, it sometimes it's used for an animal, and then it's making a sound. Sometimes I I think it even uses for like a trumpet or a loud noise. Sometimes. So yeah. So that's how we get our word telephone. A phone and then travel. Tele means tele far away. Travel far sound far away. So you got your telephone right. Uh, psuke. Psuke. Soul. Yeah. I think psychology. Study of the soul. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Aura. Aura. Hora. Hour. Hour. Okay, now the, uh, the, the, the marking, the breath marks on the top, turn that, put an H in front of that, the, the omega. Yes, because we have it like this. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, so you have the accent there, and then you have the rough, rough breathing mark. 
What was the word for glory again? Doxa. Doxology. Well, doxology, right. Thank you. Uh, where we get our word doxology? Okay, good, good. So um, you remember that we were looking at, so lesson four, we were looking at the second declension nouns. Lesson five, we were looking at first declension nouns. Somebody tell me what a declension is. Uh, Noun ending. Okay, it has to do with the endings. A grouping of nouns. Yeah, so basically a grouping of nouns that have similar endings. Right? And grouping so, of nouns. Yes. So it's, it's like a, a group of nouns that have similar endings. Just a big word meaning that. That's it. So um, if you, why did we start with second declension nouns? They're more common. Most of them. Yes, because they're more common, usually masculine and much more common. Um, and then first declension nouns are usually what gender? Feminine. Feminine, right. Good, okay, good. You guys are remembering more than I, I thought you would. <laughs> That's good, all right. Um, let's see here, what else should we review? Um, so when we, when we had the, First declension nouns. <clears throat> oh yeah. So what what should you look for at the end of a word? There's there's two letters that that should kind of tip you off that this is probably a, a first declension noun that come at the end of the word. Alpha. Yep. Alpha is one of them, like we see here. And what's the other one? Ada. Ada. Like your eta. So, uh, because eta is basically, think of it like a long alpha. Right? So, so, that's what you're going to see. And when you see that coming at the end of a, a word that looks like a noun to you, think it must, it's probably first declension uh, and, and probably feminine. And with the second declension nouns, there's what vowel kind of tips you off at the end of the word, toward the end of the word? Omicron, yes. Yep. Yep. So your Omicron is usually what you'll see there. Okay, good. Just repeat that. What is the Omicron? Uh, what does that indicate? For the second declension nouns. Oh, thanks. Okay. You'll see that toward usually at the in the in the ending of the word. Okay, good. Good deal. Okay. So um, let's go over to lesson six on page 33 and we'll look at some new vocabulary okay. page 33 and so what we're doing in this lesson this lesson covers uh two major things the article or the um and then also adjectives and it puts the article and the adjectives in the same lesson because they do similar things. Right? So, um, and they're going to take similar endings. And so let's look at um, our vocabulary first. And so we have agathos. And agathos is good. Okay, you you okay. said why would it not be uh, uh, agathos? Because the a the, oh. a the syllable the emphasis is on the on the front the ag. On the because al because it's it's the on agathos. Yeah. Because it's what's on the front is the breathing mark, not the accent. Agathos. You see that? Yeah, I see it there. The agathos. Yeah. Yeah. So so you're going to accent the os. I was putting the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Yes. <laughs> yep. And um, the way I remember this one is Agatha Christie, right? Agatha oh. named Agatha. She's a good writer. Mm -hmm. Good. Good one. If you like that. <laughs> 
So, um, so Agathos, um, allos, allos is other. No. Other. On the tank, the, 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 the next, after the comma there, there's an ita. And you would pronounce that one, uh, alas, alase. Hold on, let me write it up here. So we got, so alas. So I'm gonna emphasize this because this yeah. is the smooth breathing mark. This is the accent. And so we emphasize the first syllable, alas. Now, if you put the eta at the end of it, how do you, the, I mean, the, the, the eta, the eta. You put the eta at the end of it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so we have um, the, let me see here. So, okay, so you have agathos. The eta after it is your, it's telling you what gender it is. Or no, no, it's, it's a, what am I doing here? It's a masculine feminine. Right, okay. Yeah, so it's giving you the first, it's giving you the, the nominative singular because adjectives can either be masculine, feminine, or neuter. They can be any of them because they're going to agree with whatever noun they're modifying. And so it's giving you this um, agathos is going to be what it's going to be if it's masculine, agathe, um, or let's use alos. Alas is going to be Ale. Ale, that's what I was asking. The e, the e, yep. the e, the and then the, if it's neuter, so, it's going to be Allah. Allah. And so it's, it's giving you the, the endings depending on what gender it's going to be. Okay. So, um, Let's see, dikaios, dikaios, and that one is going to be righteous, righteous. Um, How do you pronounce that again? Dikalos or dikalos? No, uh, dikaios, dikaios. So, dikaios. Yeah. Oh, I, I left out my alpha. <clears throat> Spell that right, right? Yep. So, dikaos. So, I'm going to emphasize this. And so, righteous. Um, let's see. I don't have a good way to help you remember that one. I don't know. That one way, mm -hmm. I don't have a trick for that one. I just dignity, maybe chaos oh. or dignity. Dignity, okay. Was righteous. That helps you remember it. <laughs> Use it. <laughs> right. Yep. All right. Um, let's see. Agero is the next one, and this one is actually just a verb. Right. Mm -hmm. So he threw a verb in here for us. And this is I raise up, which is good since we just had Easter weekend, Resurrection weekend. And so, Agero. Does that mean like Agero. raise up? Agero. Excuse me? Like raise up Lazarus? Yes. Yep. Oh. So, it, I, this one, I believe it can be for like raising up somebody from the dead. I think uh -huh. they can also use it for, I think, in the. I remember right in the book of Acts when Paul's talking about God raised up a king, you know, just like, oh, yeah. the, to, like raising up David to be the king. I think it can be used for that too, if I okay. remember right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Think of an Easter egg. <laughs> Egero. Yeah. No. That's pretty good. Okay. Eremos. So. Eremos. 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 And this is a desert. Um, oh, arid. Yeah, yeah, I, I think arid. arid. Um, and it's not, I, it's not necessarily always uh, a, 
a desert in the sense of no water there, but think of like an, a place you can't really inhabit, which usually is going to be in Israel, a place that's with no water, but, but kind of a wilderness place where you can't, where nobody lives. Yeah, like Arizona. Yeah, kind of like Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course. Not. Um, okay, next one we have is eschatos. Eschatos. And eschatos. So, and think of if if you know eschatology. Oh, eschatology. Yes, yeah, it's, it's study of last things. Yeah. And so oh. eschatos is last. Yes. Yep. Use for that. Um, so adjective there. Next, we have uh, kakos, which kakos. is bad. <laughs> Kaka is bad. <laughs> yeah. <I'm thinking. laughs> so, so I always remembered it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Well, the next one is <laughs> kalos, which is good or beautiful. And I always remember that because the man who taught me Greek grew up in a city, well, nearby a city named Callus. No, it's spelled, no, it's, it's actually a French name, but we pronounce it our own way. What is it? Callus? Yeah. It should be Calais, but in, in Maine is Callus. And, and he always said, it's a good and beautiful place. And so remember that. The funny thing was, it wasn't a very good and beautiful place. <laughs> that, that's yeah. the irony of it. It was California. Okay, there you go. California is beautiful. Mm. Kalos. Kalos. Okay. Um, so, so good in the sense of, you, have, you have, notice you have two words for good. Right? We have agathos and we have kalos. Right? And so agathos and kalos. And, Kalos, he has good, beautiful. So good and more in, in, in that kind of aesthetic kind of sense. Um, I think of agathos maybe more in the sense of um, right and wrong, good like that. But I mean, it's, I'm sure there's a lot more to it than that. But just some ways to... Synonyms are, are hard sometimes because the shades of meaning are, overlap a lot. Uh, curios, and that is Lord. Lord. So, yep. Um, and so you notice it has Oops. Lord small L and Lord with a capital L, because this could either be this is the word that's I mean throughout the New Testament it's used for the Lord. Whenever you see the word Lord, nine times out of ten it's going to be curios. Um, but then also it could be used of a, of a human being too, in the sense of like, a, think of like in England, an English Lord, like a sir. So it can be used in that sense too. But um, the Lord is the premium chief sir, right? In that sense. Now so, does, uh, does, does Greek follow the deity like English does? Or if it's a, the Lord, you would capitalize uh, the first letter? Uh, it depends on what Greek text you have. I think most of them do, if I remember right. Pretty much, I think they, you can pretty much open up anywhere and find the word Lord. I think it does capitalize it normally. Yeah, yeah, it does here. This, the text I was recommending to you, the one it, it does. So. <clears throat> it's, not, it's, it's not gonna be used that many times for anyone besides God. Um, the one place I can think of, uh, Sarah called Abraham Lord. And I'm pretty sure it uses curios, but in the sense of he's, you know, she had respect for her husband and, you know, referred to him in that way. Well, that would have been in Hebrew, wouldn't it? But, mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but it's, it's uh, quoted in the, Peter quotes it, refers to that in First sure. Peter. So Tao, when Blair comes home, call him curious, right? No, no. <laughs> you don't have to tell him what it means. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Um, Mick Ross, and this is Excellent. small or micro. little, like micro. Something oh, with micro. an M sound? Micro, yes. Mick Ross. Mick Ross. That's where we get our word micro. Yes. Micro. Oh. Yeah. About, uh, about 40% of the English words have a Greek root, and about 60% of the English words have a Latin root. It's helpful. I remember that from homeschooling my kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, next one is necros, and that is dead. Necros, and I think neck, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. Or you could do, you could be more sophisticated and think necromancer. <laughs> or, yes. Um, but yeah. I think somebody getting strangled by the neck, the dead. Mm -hmm. Now you notice um, we had Thanatos, which is death, and Necros is dead. So Thanatos is a noun, Necros is an adjective. So, oh. Oh. In English, when we do that, dead and death obviously have the same root. In Greek, not so. So. Yeah. Uh, then we have the, which. We have ha, he, ta, and we're going to look at that in more detail. So um, then we have hados, or hados, the road. which is a road or a way. Um, in the New Testament, when they referred to the Christians as being those of the way, oh, the new, they, it was they the, used the six, hados. hados. Yeah, right, right, right. Good one. Exod yeah, so Exodus, Exodus, this is X, which is out of, and the Odus on the end is, comes from Odus. Oh, good, wow. So it's the way out. Yeah. It's uh, this, okay, so Odus, Odus is a noun, so it's a feminine. Now, but it has an awesome ending, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. So, so good, good. Okay. That's a good point. So, okay. Part of the reason, so I, I just noticed here the two nouns that we have in this section are both look like exceptions to what we normally thought of. Okay. So, we have Hadas. And we also have Eremos, or Eremos. And notice each of those, after it has your eta, indicating that it's feminine. But what I told you before, right, it just throws it all off because we have an os ending. And if you just looked at that word, you would think, oh, that must be second declension. Looks like it must be masculine because it's got the Omicron in there, uh, but it's an exception to the rule. And just like English has all kinds of exceptions to the rule, Greek has some too. And so, so one of the things that you just notice is that when we're looking at like the declensions and things like that, this is the majority of the time it's gonna be like this. It doesn't mean there's not exceptions sometimes. Okay, so, um, but, this is part of the reason why he gives you the article afterwards so you know if it's masculine or feminine or neuter. It's that is a good question. What do we do with it? I'm trying to, I think it's covered later, I think. Not, it's not in this lesson. Let me see. Hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing the where he gives the endings for that. I will get back to you on that. Look it up. Yeah. Unless our resident Greek expert knows. <laughs> Jim Duda, do you have any idea? Let's see if it's good. Yeah, I was thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking at the back of the book, it might have them. Andrew, why you ask that question? <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I'll have to get back to you on it, Andrew. Okay. Help me to remember to look that up. All right. Um, yes. Question. Uh, you mentioned this earlier, but I don't think I caught it. The vocabularies in, in the text here, they, they provide different endings, uh, or they, uh, for example, the uh, agathos. Yes. That could be agape and agathon also. Yes, yes. And so so what it's going to do, okay, let's she asked, let's look look down at the bottom of page 33. Okay. And what we, what you have there is the declension of the adjective agathos good. Mm -hmm. And so basically an adjective is gonna be declined like a noun, except it's going to have masculine, it can take feminine, or it can take neuter endings. And so, so the declension of agathos, you just got, you have it for masculine, feminine, and neuter, singular and plural, both. So, yeah. My question actually might be answered by the first. Okay, it'll be observed that Eremos and Paras are feminine, though nearly all nouns in the second declension. Ending in os or masculine. He's just saying there that it's. I, the way I read that is that he's just saying that most nouns that have a second declension ending like os are masculine. Yeah. Okay. So maybe, yeah, maybe that's. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. Okay. Cool figure it out. Um, yeah, so that's why the adjectives have the like os, a, on, after it. It's, it's telling you what the masculine uh, singular nominative is and then what the uh, feminine singular nominative, what the neuter singular nominative is for each of those words. It just gives you the ending after each one. So we got two more vocab words. Uh, pistos, pistos is faithful. Uh, faithful. Faithful, trustworthy, um, things like that. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, you got a faithful pistol. Good way to remember it. And um, then we have protos uh, first. Um, I think in English, the pro um, prefix is usually having to do with something first. So, so. Yep. Okay, so that's our vocabulary for lesson six. Now let's look over at the thing I really wanted to look at tonight is on page 34. And we have the declension of the article. And this is, this, you know, memorize it if you can. If you can't, do what I did. Well, on my book, I got a little tab there. Because when I was studying Greek, I was constantly going back to that page. Okay. Or 
put it on a chart or next week I can make a chart for you and have it up, up for you. But um, that the article just shows you what the common endings are. And, and so it's, it will help you out a lot. If there's, if there's a word that you don't recognize as you're reading in your, your text and you see a, a noun you don't recognize, look to see if it has an article. If it has an article, that'll tell you immediately what it is. You know, um, so, so with the article, the masculine, we have, we do the nominative, genitive, dative, dative and accusative. So we have ha, we have two, we have to, e -O. Oh, omega. And you notice it has the iota subscript under there, which which just think dative when you see that. And then you have ton. No. Oh. Ton is just a, that. Mm. And so your common, except for the nominative case, which would the normal ending would be os, um, but this is going to follow your regular endings of the second declension masculine. You just put the, the towel on the front of it. Okay. And then for your feminine, you've got a, <clears throat> you've got taste, you've got te, you've got ta. Oh, whoops, teen. And then for your neuter, uh, to to and ta. So following your general endings that we've learned so far, it's just gonna follow those and you just put the towel on the front, except in the nominative case, singular. Um, so anytime it's, it's going to be in agreement with the word that it follows it, or the word that it's modifying, it's going with. So basically you're gonna use the article, um, normally if it's a, uh, you're distinguishing this particular thing, this particular noun, um, otherwise it's just gonna be like um, a book. But if you're saying this is the book, right? You're referring to something spe more specific and you wanna, you wanna show that you, you might use the article. Um, and so like we would do that in English. Other things like uh, proper nouns with names will often have an article in front of them, uh, just to distinguish that. Sometimes in Greek too, if it's if it's um, you're talking about this concept like faith or truth, they will often have an article in front of it. And um, sometimes they're talking about the faith, but sometimes it's just talking about this concept of faith in general. And, and so sometimes we'll use an article to, to distinguish that. Um, Would they use that for the Lord or no? The Lord, usually it'll have an article. With, okay. with Curios, it'll have an article. Okay. Yep. Um, the, the whole use of the Greek article, there have been volumes, books written on that. So, so I mean, it's, it's all these, you know, nuances to it that you're not gonna learn in first year Greek and I'm still trying to learn. So, um, but those are some of the basic ways that they're gonna use the article. Um, can you think of anything, Jim, to add to when they would use an article and when they wouldn't? Sometimes they use it when they don't. We use it when they don't. Yeah, yes, right. You said, Jim said, sometimes they use it when we don't and we use it when they don't. <laughs> which is true it's true yeah um and sometimes it's debated why did they put an article there and why didn't they 
And, and you'll see sometimes in Bible commentaries, they'll say they, they use the article here for this reason and someone else will say, no, they didn't. So, yeah, so it, it, it can be a debated thing, the meaning of why they're using that. But you, I mean, just generally speaking, you're using it to distinguish something. You're talking about a particular thing. And um, yeah. so um, sometimes they'll use it as well um, when they're, I, I, when, you're, when you have like a, a predicate nominative, they will use that to show which one is the subject and what's the predicate nominative. I think we cover that later, but that, that's sometimes they'll do that too. Uh, so grammatically, they'll use it to do, make a distinguishing thing. Um, so um, let's look at some, let's practice a little bit here. Okay, so I'm gonna write some words up here and I want you to tell me which article should go with it, okay? So if I do, Logos, what's the article I'm gonna to use to go with that? Ha. Okay, that's an easy one because that was in your vocabulary, right? That's how you learn it, right? The, the Logos, you have the ha after it. Um, what if I change this to, Logu. Two. And so you notice how the endings are going to be the same. Um, what if I do, let's see here. Okay, he gives us an example here in the book. Let's do this. Okay, so in this sentence here, Where, where's the verb? Okay, and blepo means what? I see. So, I see. Okay, now what is what? Is, what am I seeing? We have the words. I'm seeing the word. Yeah. A lot of them. The words. Whoops. Plural. So, because the us ending is going to be your plural, your accusative plural. And so it's going to be I see the words. And you have the us, us. You got agreement. How would you say I see the word, like the word of God? Like the word? We would the have word. to. We would want to change this. Ton. Log on. Because then it would okay. be accusative singular. And so the agreement again. And if you, okay, so let's say, let's say that you don't remember, oh man, how do I, how do I decline second declension nouns? I can't remember, right? You could look back in your book to lesson four, or you could look at your um, on page 34, the declension of the article, and I can see this ton is accusative masculine singular, so I know this is going to be two. Uh. So I don't have to flip back to the other lesson that where it's going to decline logos for me. That's, that's why I'm saying the, the article is very helpful 
for determining your part of speech and everything. All right, let's see. Let's do another one here. Okay. Okay, he gives an example with Ross. Okay. This might give us our answer to the question you had, Andrew. Ten. Okay. Okay. So this one is going to be I C, and we have Hadas, but here we have Hadan, and we have Tame. Okay. So what is that? How are we going to de decline that? Yes. So it's going to be the the way or the road. So and um, I think we we got our answer here for how do you what what endings is is this going to take? This is taking like a second declension ending, but it's got the the feminine article. So this is, I mean, that's how you're going to be using the article in Greek. Um, so it's going to agree with a noun that follows it. Any questions so far? Okay. Let's see here. Let's do, let me try to make a, some sentences here. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so what do we got here? Where, where's our verb? Lepe. Lepe to see. So this is to see. Okay. And so what's our subject? Do we have a subject? Suke. Okay. And so soul. And so is the soul. Soul sees life. Soul sees life. Right. Soul sees life. So, okay. Now, what if I wanted to say the soul sees the life? What would I do? Which article would it be? That's the question. Look at this. Think? It's going to be tame. I would guess it in about 12 marks. Yes. Yeah, 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 that's good. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. 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 So just look for look for what's going to agree. Right. Yep. Okay, that's going to be your next guess. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Let's try another one.
Okay, let's do. Okay. Okay, so what do we have for our verb? Writes, a man writes. Okay, so we have a man writes. Okay, and what does he write? Okay, the command or commands. Yes, okay. And the law. And the law. The commands. Commands and the law. And and law or laws. Laws. There's an S sigma at the end of it. Yep. The laws okay so um a man writes the commands and the laws and you notice your agreement here here uh, so yeah. here, here and so again how do how do i know if I, is entelos is that is that commands plural or is it command singular well i look at my chart here of articles and I see that toss is accusative feminine plural. So I know that entelos must be. And then how do I know this is plural and not singular? The sigmas at the end. Yep. Us is the masculine accusative plural ending. Um, now, one thing that you'll see in, in Greek normally too, uh, when, the, when they use the article, if I'm correct about this, is that the if you have a the commands and the laws, if you're if you're thinking of them as a group, like two ways of saying commands and laws, two ways of saying the same thing, they would only have one article, and that this one would be left off, they're telling you that they're that they're thinking of these two things together, the one. But if you have the two one for each, they're thinking of like separate things. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I think we would, I think we would. I mean, yeah, if I wanted to distinguish the commands from the laws, I would probably use the twice. Yeah. Okay. How are we doing? Is it making sense? Good thumbs up. I, good. I like the thumbs up. Okay. Let's try one more sentence and then we'll look at a Bible verse. Okay, let's do. <clears throat> By the way, Pastor Russ, according to the Strong's Concordance, uh huh. We only have to learn 5,624 Greek words. That's all there is in the Greek New Testament. That's encouraging for you, isn't it? 
<laughs> but about, yeah. about several thousand of them are people's names. Yeah. So uh, there's only just a few thousand uh, verbs that we need to learn. Yes. These sentences, I, I am sort of, um, I'm taking them from page 32, but I'm adding some articles to them. So, yeah, they just the exercises there. Ah. Okay. Okay. So it's a longer sentence. So let's uh, find the verb first. Teach. Teach. Okay. Teach. Teach. So um, now is that um, singular or plural? Sure, yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. <laughs> uh, plural third uh, party person. Uh, yes. yes. So it's going to be third person plural. Mm -hmm. Makes it okay. <laughs> okay. So what's our subject? Yes. So, so phoni, phoni, and the I is going to be plural. The voices. This sentence isn't going to make a whole lot of sense, but. And ecclesion. It's church. 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 And yes. Remember that you see the own ending is always genitive plural. Yeah. So voices of churches. Or you could say churches voices. I guess you could say that churches apostrophe voices or voices of churches teach. And what are they going to teach? Yeah, the kingdoms. And the people, men, we're going to say men just because we're gender exclusive. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so, yeah, voices of churches teach the kingdoms and the, the men. And it doesn't make a lot of sense, but. But we're working with a little bit of vocabulary here. So again, you see, just just to show you the articles, how you use them, you got the agreement. Okay. So if we want to add the voices, you would add the toy. Okay, so if we're going to do Voices, it'd be I. So the nominative case, like the masculine and feminine doesn't have the towel in the front. You see that? Yeah. So that's, that's why it would just be I, the voice. Yeah, except neuter. Because neuter is going to confuse things. So then it'd be the voices of, now what, what if we want to say of the, the churches, mm -hmm. what would we add? Tone. 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 Omega. New. This is going to be an agreement, genitive mm -hmm. plural, the voices of the churches. Notice, notice on the article chart there, genitive plural, 
is always tone. It doesn't matter if it's masculine, feminine, or neuter. It's always tone, which is the <laughs> one break they give you. <laughs> so the voices of the churches teach the kingdoms and the men. Okay. Should we try a Bible verse? Yes. All right. <clears throat> Could we do John 14, 6? You read my mind. I was literally going to do John 14, 6. Wow. That's amazing. Well, it, it seemed like the right one to do with what we're learning. Yeah, it goes with articles. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yep, so we have John 14. Le and you'll probably all know that verse anyway, or it'll be very familiar to you. Is it in the book anywhere? Um, no. Okay. It's in this book. <laughs> and I... I didn't, I didn't get a chance to get you a, a handout for it, so there you'll just have to take my word for it on the board. There you go, Otto. Mega. Oh. Otto. Mm. No, that's it. That's a eta. No, 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 that's not an eta. That's a. Oh, yeah, that is an eta. And this one has some of your new vocabulary in it, too. That is. I, yeah, well, I, I thought of this verse when, when I saw these. Words that we were using. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah. Okay, let's stop there. Okay, so, um, Okay, there is a okay, there's a verb that you recognize in the first part of the sentence. Lege. Lege? Lege. Lege auto. And okay, let's, let's let's just read it first in Greek. And so lege auto pa Jesus ego ego me hey padas. I, I, Aletheia, Aletheia, I, Z, Zoe, Zoe. Okay, so can you pronounce the fourth word? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yep, Jesus. Actually, it's Joshua, but actually, it should be Jesus. Jesus. Um. So, Lege. What is Lege? Okay. Says okay. So says, and what's the subject? Who says? It's Jesus. Yep. And we know it's the subject without having to decline Jesus because right a, there, um, our um, article tells us it's a, it's a, it's a nominative yeah. case. So and. That's a case where they're using the article because it's with the proper name. Yeah. Jesus. And so Jesus says, okay, this one, this word you don't know yet. This is to him. You notice though the Yoda subscript? The subscript. Without knowing that word, that should tell you oh, this is probably going to be date of case. So it's to him. This is to him. Yes. It's going to be your indirect object. And you don't need a separate word for it. Well, if it's being used completely like a direct object, that here, here you would need it in English, right? You would have to say Jesus said to him. 
Yes, 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 yes. There is no, you don't need the word. They don't have to translate the word to, right? Um, okay, so now this is capitalized, so it's going to give us a um, quotation now, the beginning of the quote. Um, there's no, th there's no way to distinguish. They don't distinguish the end of a quote. You just have to determine that from the context. That's okay. ego. So uh, these words you don't have yet. This is I, and ego. Amy is am. Am, am. Okay. Now this word you have. Odos. 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 What was it? Odos. I heard somebody say, "Tom, did you what did hey. you say?" Oh, way yeah and so it's the way kai and and, and aletheia aletheia the truth the oh truth. the truth yeah the truth yeah. aletheia is the truth aletheia the truth and kai. the joy the life and well oh, cool okay. And then you got the agreement there with the the, the agreeing with the Zoe at the end there with the yes yep. with the eta at the end eta, eta. and so with this one way truth and life are all feminine right and we know that because of the feminine oh, article the, uh, eta, eta. yes they're all nominative case and and the reason is because they're they're acting as a predicate nominative here. Um, and so, and your subject is going to be I, so I am the way, truth, the life. It's a predicate nominative is like um, a direct object with is or am with a, a, a being verb. Okay, so. Um, if you have um, it's a static, it's a static verb, right? Yeah. So, so basically, it, it it works like a direct object would, except you're not going to use a predicate nominative with a regular verb. You you have it with a being verb, like um, am, is, are, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So, because it's because it's not actually the object, right? Yeah. So it's just renaming it. Yeah. yeah. So that verse you you knew. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of them. Nine. Well, ten. Okay. You knew you knew ten words in that verse from your vocabulary already. That's good. Cool. All right. Any questions about the verse? That's a powerful verse, man. That's very. Jesus is very discriminating. He he's he's he's, he's a discriminator. <laughs> I'm glad he is. Very, very exclusive. Very yes. exclusive. There's only one way. Amen. Yep. And it's. People would call that discriminatory. It's actually not discriminatory if it's true, right? If it's if it's the only way of salvation, it Amen. would be it would be pretty um, awful to to say there was another way when there actually isn't. There's no pantheism here. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. He's telling them because he's wanting to include them, right? <laughs> so yeah. Exactly. I am the only way. All right. Well, good. Let's let's go ahead and we'll close in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time we've had tonight, Lord, and, and uh, thank you for the um, all the students here, Lord, who are can, have been very faithful continuing on with Greek, and and thank you that they're you're helping them learn it. And we just pray that they would continue on with it, Lord, and and begin to use it as much as they can and, and gain more insight from your word with it. And we just uh, pray that you bless the rest of our week now, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. See you Thank week. you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.
I'm going to stop the recording.